In November, Americans elected Ronald Reagan as president of the United States. But as you know, a president alone does not run the country. He needs help. And in the past two weeks, uh, the president-elect has begun naming his cabinet members. So far, they are all white, all male. And there's no superstar really in the lot. Who are these men and what do they represent? Well, we're going to talk about that today with political analyst and reporter for the Boston Globe, New York Times, New Republic, Sidney Blumenthal. Good morning, Sidney. Good morning, John. Welcome. Good to be here. Let's go right down the list. And if you will, pluses, minuses, if yeah. there be any. Okay. Well, the, the personalities of uh, these characters are very interesting, and, and so are uh, w what they represent. And that's really what's the most important thing. And if you look at these uh, people, uh, you can see uh, what the forces are behind them and what the forces are behind the Reagan administration. Because, uh, as you pointed out, it's, we don't just elect a president. We elect a whole constellation of people uh, in the cabinet. Now, take Alexander Haig, who is the most controversial of all the appointees. He has just been um, named uh, Secretary of State. Now, he will go through a very, I think, acrimonious and difficult uh, confirmation process in the uh, Senate, uh, although I think he'll get confirmed. I was going to say they knew that he would be subjected to a great deal of heat, so they must be pretty confident that his coattails are clean. Um, uh, well, I think that he's probably done nothing illegal, although, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But there, there are a lot of questions about uh, Haig's past. Haig, as we know, was a former NATO commander and was in the Nixon White House. He was an aide to uh, Kissinger. And some people think that uh, in Nixon's final days, he was the de facto yeah. acting president when Nixon was sort of in a emotional, state of emotional collapse. Now, I like this next one, though, because he, I, <coughs> excuse me, I think he presents the most eclectic of the, all the people. He is the youngest member of the cabinet, and there have been uh, very interesting stories written about Dave Stockman. Yeah, Dave Stockman is, is named uh, head of the Office of Management and Budget. Now, I think you know, if you hear about that, you might think that's an awfully boring post. But in yeah. fact, it's the key, one of the key posts in Washington because uh, it's, the, it's <coughs> a highly political post because it's the post by which you manage the budget through Congress and you use it in a very political way. For instance, you can make the Democrats look like big spenders that way. And you also uh, have more appointees than anywhere else. And you can run that network out through the congressional committees and through the agencies and really wield a great deal of power in Washington. And it helps you control Washington. And that's where uh, Carter got in a lot of problems uh, because of uh, Burt Lance. Mm -hmm. uh, Lance was unable to do that. Now, Stockman is 34 years old. He's the youngest appointee. And in some ways, he's uh, a radical. He's yeah. considered radical in his economic uh, doctrines. I think the news people, the journalists, are, are really keeping an eye on him in the hopes that he will provide them with some good copy. Yeah, well, I think if anyone does, it's, uh, it's Stockman. The Stockman's uh, uh, ideas are really not those of a traditional Republican. He's a big tax cut man. He's a yeah. big believer in what... Camp Roth man. Yeah, yeah, of what's called the supply side economics. This is not the old, uh, old time religion mm -hmm. among the Republicans. This is something uh, rather new. And, um, and Stockman is, uh, is of a different order of person than the traditional appointee, too. He's not one of these businessmen. He's, uh, he's an ideologue in some ways. That's going to be interesting watching yeah. him. All right. Now, this man is uh, drawing a lot of uh, criticism from the uh, more conservative members of the party, and he pronounces his name Regan. It's Donald Regan, and he's, the, uh, he's been appointed uh, Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, he is uh, head of Merrill Lynch, and uh, his opinions are a little more complex than simply being bullish on America. Uh, he, uh, he is uh, of the old establishment in some ways, of the old Wall Street establishment. And that's what a lot of uh, President-elect Reagan's personal entourage object to. Uh, he's not ideological in the way they are. He is not a staunch conservative. He will deal with anybody who holds power. And in fact, he was rather close to President Carter. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had given money to President Carter's campaign, and he also gave money to, Reagan. I guess, Reagan's campaign. Yeah. So um, he uh, originally, uh, uh, President-elect Reagan's um, personal circle, kitchen cabinet, had wanted William Simon, mm -hmm. who was um, uh, sort of a believer in the free enterprise creed. Uh, but uh, Donald Reagan is not one of these uh, kinds of people. He's, a, he's been regarded as a bit of a maverick on Wall Street, too, because he got Merrill Lynch into the real estate business, among other things. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy on Wall Street about uh, Reagan because he wants to turn Merrill Lynch more into a financial institution. Yeah. And that is a threat in some ways to the uh, larger banks. All right. So there's a lot of conflict there. Now, this next man is uh, referred to as a nuts and bolts man. 
Casper Weinberger, mm -hmm. who uh, has been named uh, Secretary of Defense. He is perhaps the closest personally uh, among the cabinet appointees to President-elect Reagan. Mm -hmm. He worked with Reagan in uh, California. He's a Californian. Yeah. Right, and uh, he's part of his, his uh, circle. <clears throat> and this appointee, uh, the appointment also shows the, uh, the uh, degree to which uh, the Reagan people hold the uh, defense uh, foreign policy uh, issue uh, to be one of uh, primary concern. And that they want their man, the ultimate loyalist, in that position. Uh, well, I wonder, Sidney, that's where the most of the money is going to be being spent. Uh, could it be, too, that because of there's going to be an increase in, in defense spending, they want a good bottom line man in there to make sure there won't be too much waste? I say too much because you know there's bound to be some. Well, I, I think they want someone who is very, very loyal, who is part of the team about whom they have mm -hmm. absolutely no questions, and, uh, and who, uh, who has uh, shown himself to be... Uh, a, a capable administrator in the past too, um, mm -hmm. but you, I mean, you can see these, these sort of polarities. You have Weinberger in defense, you have Stockman uh, at OMB, and and you can see the kinds of uh, tensions that are going on. You see, uh, w uh, with the Reagan, I guess the ultimate promise of the Reagan administration is that you can increase defense spending and cut taxes and uh, and pare down uh, wasteful federal spending at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you can see how these personalities are sort of woven into this policy. All right, the last one is the only member of the Reagan cabinet uh, that uh, drew an endorsement from Senator Kennedy. That's uh, Richard Schweiker, who's the senator from Pennsylvania. Uh, Schweiker, I think, is the only uh, senator, the only uh, member of the Senate who's been appointed to the uh, cabinet. In the past, mm -hmm. he was thought of uh, as a liberal, mm -hmm. as a real diehard member of the liberal Republican establishment. But he became a born-again conservative. He's a born-again conservative. <laughs> uh, in 1976, if we can recall, mm -hmm. when uh, Reagan was running for president, he named Schweiker as his vice president before the convention. It was a very mm -hmm. startling uh, uh, choice. And now uh, Schweiker is uh, chosen ahead uh, uh, health and Human Services, and that's where it's expected some spendings will, uh, some uh, cutbacks will take place. Uh, and uh, there's a question now about uh, how you do that. And the fact that uh, Schweiker has won the uh, endorsement, so to speak, of Senator Kennedy shows that uh, perhaps it'll be done in, um, in not a sloppy manner, in a manner that hurts people, but in a humane, thoughtful way. And that's, I think, is the idea. But Schweiker also represents uh, the uh, decline of the liberal wing of the Republican Party. He had to go mm -hmm. over to the conservative side in order to remain in the mainstream of his own party. It was also it's a fairly obvious uh, political do bill that was collected on. Yeah, among, uh, among others. I mean, mm -hmm. Schweiker sort of represents uh, that side of it. And then uh, another uh, cabinet appointment, say, Watt in Interior represents the new right. So there are all these forces within the Reagan cabinet. Well, we've talked of a few of the members of the new Reagan cabinet. Are you, uh, Sidney, are you encouraged? Are you optimistic? Or is it wait and see? Well, I think it's uh, obviously it's, it's, it's wait and see, but I think that you can see some, uh, some clear policies. Now, take uh, 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 some clear directions here. Now, is Reagan um, uh, going to allow his policies to be made as a result of the outcome of internal struggles between his men? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's some question about whether that's going to happen. Oh, is he a ratifier? someone who ratifies the conflicts that take place, the outcome, or is he a real leader of his own entourage? Now, it's very unclear at this point uh, uh, whether which is true mm -hmm. and which, which policies will emerge. Uh, Reagan, for instance, was absent at the, um, at the announcement of uh, his first batch of the cabinet. Uh, appointments. Yeah, they said it was sort of dull. He could have livened it up a little bit. Yeah, well, people well, wonder whether <laughs> Reagan will be absent in a certain way also. And um, yeah, that's interesting the, thought. That's, that was a question in Washington when I was there last week. Thank you very much, Sidney Blumenthal. Of course, the one man we, who is not in the cabinet, perhaps the most powerful all, of all, Edward Meese. Thank you very yes. much, Sidney.